So this is something I used to talk about with my friend Danny. It was two years ago, so imagine I'm 16 years old. It's when I was still editing Fortnite videos and there's this concept that I made up. And at the time I was only making like five, six, seven hundred bucks a month, which is good for my age at like 16 years old, that's really good. But I'd always see these people and compared to where I was at the time, working with random streamers, working with random Fortnite channels, I couldn't imagine how I would ever get there. And I devised this plan called the pricing buffer. And I sit here today, over the last three years, I've worked from doing videos for like $2.50 and now I'm doing videos for over a thousand, $1,200, $1,300. In fact, I literally just got a client two days ago, which was 1,500 great British pounds. And if you're not from the UK, that's about $1,800. For a video that I would literally have done the same work a year ago for 200 bucks. You can see who I've worked with, you can see what my work looks like and you can imagine how much you make when you're working with larger creators like this. And I want to share to you the framework, this concept that I made and how you can use it for yourself. So I want to give you an example first, right? This is a bit of a weird example, a bit of a weird way to explain this. But I want you to imagine you're in the supermarket right now and you're about to buy a carton of milk. So you're in the milk aisle, you've got that milk and you're just looking at the price tag now and you see that it's $5. Now $5, I'm hoping that's like within context of what, how much milk actually is in the US or whatever. But just imagine it's $5 for this argument's sake. And imagine that you knew that in another store, so they sell the same like sized carton of milk, but for $4. So now you're hit with this decision that you need to make either you stay here you buy it from here or you go to the other store so you travel there and then you get the four dollars milk from there so you save a buck and of course when we think about it logically when you think like okay is it worth me traveling to this other place so it maybe takes me 10 minutes to get there i'll have to drive my car so i have to use the petrol for it and then it's like all that hassle and then i have to buy some stuff from here some stuff from there it's just a hassle you would probably say you'd pay a dollar to get rid of all that stress and of course there's going to be one dumbass that thinks like oh actually if you save a dollar it's like they're going to be like penny pinching and shit and for you as like you watch videos like this you're probably smarter than like some dumbass but you would be smart enough to choose, okay, it's $5 here. I can save a dollar by going somewhere else. But like, I'm already in the supermarket. I'm already like in the milk aisle. I've literally got it in front of me. It's in my car. It would be long for me to travel. The milk, I know this brand is, tastes good. Like I've tried it before. Everything's just lined up. And what this really showed was if the circumstances are right, if the situation is set up in the correct way, people will be willing to pay more for the exact same thing. And once you understand this concept that a product or a service, its price isn't concrete, there's so many external factors around it, you realize that we can leverage the same thing with our editing. What I told my friend in that call two years ago was that I think there's this 20% buffer on either side of your prices. So let's say for math's sake, you're charging $100 right now. If you were to charge $80, a client probably wouldn't tell the difference between it. Like $20, it's not a huge difference. And in the same way, if you were to tell a client you're charging $120 versus $100, they probably wouldn't mind. And by the way, I need to clear this up. This isn't me saying like you raise the prices on your current client. You've got like a consistent flow of clients and it's like if you are consistently getting it with a hundred dollars so you got five clients in a row at a hundred bucks you could probably charge hundred and twenty dollars from now on and your work doesn't change at all but people still perceive it as just as valuable because what i found with prices is that for a lot of editors it comes down more to fear or a scarcity mindset they're essentially the same thing scarcity mindset is just the fear of rejection the fear that nobody else is going to come but it ultimately comes down to the fact that clients are going to say no so the way this works is that when you are raising your prices instead of going in like 50 100 200 300 chunks so like one day you're charging 50 dollars and you try and improve them and you try charging 300 because you see other editors doing it that's not what i'm saying you should do what i'm saying is that once you have a price that you know people are paying for so you need to get a consistent client flow so i have other videos to talk about client flow and everything that's not what we're going to talk about here what i'm saying is that once you found a price that you know you can get consistent clients at that doesn't mean every single person says yes but you have like a decent amount of people coming in you tell them your price and maybe 40 percent of them say yes that is enough to fill up your roster once you found that price times it by 1.2 so that's 20 percent extra and then anyone else that comes in or anyone else that you reach out to that's the price you're gonna say and notice how at no point in this have i told you to improve your editing of course your editing is going to be the number one driver of your prices but this is like the quickest way that i've found to raise your prices like a lot of editors don't raise their prices and they struggle with raising their prices and i asked them when the last time they tried raising their prices was and they just say like i haven't raised them for a lot of people and i hope you understand what i'm saying here the problem isn't that you can't raise your prices it's the fact that you literally haven't done it yet nobody's rejected you bro for half of these editors that complain that they can't raise their prices they haven't even given the offer for someone to accept it and i'll be honest if you're not getting like any clients right now this isn't going to be as applicable right now but i promise you this is going to be the number one thing you need to know when you are continuing to like go on your journey and you are getting clients
Because this is the shit that literally I don't see any other like creator or YouTuber talking about where you having good editing is the prerequisite. But for you to increase your prices, there's so many other factors that go into it. You've got your actual editing, you've got your branding, you've got your communication, and literally the words you use, the psychological tactics that you use, the books that I've read have come into how much money I make with editing. Of course, I've worked on my editing, but I've fucking read so much about it. I've gone through so many like courses and mentors and like I've spoken to so many people. There's so much into editing where honestly you've probably seen it like you know what i'm talking about where there's some good editor his work looks good but you can tell like he hasn't got many big clients or you can tell he's not making much from it maybe he ends up making like 500 a grand like 2k but that's all he ever gets up to and of course that's not me saying like that's a tiny bit of money even for me bro i'm 18 for me to be able to say i make even 1k would be good for most people my age but i've gotten to the point now and i've helped a few other editors the top editors that are watching this if they are any it's like you guys know what i'm talking about where once you've seen like how much money is possible like to be made within editing you look back at your younger self where he had the goals of like oh 1k oh maybe if i make 2k i'll be happy a side income it's like you look back at him and you think he's just such an idiot it's like you're literally playing the game anyways you're already editing fair enough you did not know that it was possible but now that you hear someone telling you it's possible like stop discrediting yourself and saying that you can't do it you have other people around you in the space you see other people on twitter on like all these big editors you see them posting about what they're doing and the money they're making and even like if they don't talk about how much they make you can see who they're working with and you can imagine how much more a huge creator with 20 30 40 million subscriber pays compared to someone with 100 200k because i always hear these like bitchy lines of people saying like oh there's not enough high paying creators out there no one wants to pay me oh all creators are assholes it's like you've got to consider that maybe every single creator that you've ever reached out to and has ignored you and never decided to hire you maybe all of them aren't the problem because what's the likelihood that they're all assholes what's the likelihood that they're all broke what's the likelihood that they all aren't looking for an editor you have to consider Consider. maybe just maybe you're the problem because there's editors that they are hiring but they're not choosing to hire you so i think it's about time you take some like accountability and i hope i don't sound like an asshole saying this but i'm saying this like genuinely out of love like there are certain things that you can do in order to improve your situation with editing there are reasons why you are not getting clients if we're being honest you've been looking for like some magic video some magic pill in order for you to like get some huge editing creator. you're looking for some one ai tool that can save your careers make your editing top tier and it's like oh the, the trick is youtube shorts it's twitter giveaway will make me 10k a month per year it's like shut up the reason you're not making the money you want to make from editing or you're not working with the people you want it's not the creator's fault it's not because editing is crazy hard to get into you're the problem so really look at yourself right now look at the different parts of your business okay is my editing good enough okay objectively i'm looking at this there's 500,000 other other editors that edit like me that's probably why no one's picking me my communication isn't right i'm literally speaking like an idiot and you probably won't realize this at the time but once you've learned about like psychology and like social skills and stuff you'll realize how stupidly you're talking right now so it's like your communication your branding your page right now you think branding is literally just followers bro you having 300 400 500 editors following you does not help you get clients like I've got this private community, right? Where I teach them how to like brand properly and everything and like get clients and stuff. And one of the biggest things that we laugh at is when you see editors posting Twitter giveaways. And we think about it, like we ask them why they do it and they think, oh, it's so I can grow my brand and get Twitter clients. And it's like, make money editing. It's like, okay, how many clients have you got from it? Um, like two. Okay, did you close any of them? Nah, not really. But I said, no, it wasn't that he rejected me. And I'm like, why did you reject him? He's paying me 10 bucks. Because the people you attract when you give away free stuff are gonna be people who can't afford your editing just think about the type of person that would be attracted to a twitter giveaway will it be some 30 40 million subscriber client who's going into your free assets twitter giveaway or is it going to be a thousand different like editors that honestly aren't that advanced so you don't gain anything from like networking with them and also maybe five different creators and let's be honest if there is a creator looking for free assets it's probably going to be some new creator who has like a tiny channel they're still editing for themselves and when you try charging 500 600 per video do you think they can even afford that that was a bit of a side rant but you get what i'm saying like there's so many components of your business and if we're being completely honest right now you probably aren't perfect in all of these areas and that's not me saying that you need to be perfect right now genuinely i still don't see myself as the perfect editor i still read so many books i still go through so many mentors to continue learning this game but over the last few years i have gone through that journey that so many editors look up to like the one phrase i say all the time is like i am literally just some random brown boy like what you're watching now i'm some random brown boy in my parents house i'm 18 years old i started this when i was like 15 16 i was making Fortnite videos i continued to progress that and then i got into content and i started working my way up the client ladder 
ladder started learning all these new things networking learning how to brand learning how to market learning sales it's like learning all these things and i sit here today genuinely so proud and like honestly glad quite lucky in fact just because of where i am today because i took the right steps and maybe there's a component of luck like we said but because of the work i've put in i'm able to say that at 18 years old i'm making more money than honestly most adults make within a normal career uh, I'm gonna sound like fucking Andrew Tate the whole like escape the matrix but like I hope you understand what I'm saying like not in like a cringe way but I don't have to go to university because of this I've told this story before on my discord server oh quick plug go join the discord server but um, sometimes I jump on call where it's like so everyone can just join the public voice chats and sometimes if I see you're in there I'll just jump in call with you and I was telling the story about the point where I decided I wasn't going to go to university so I'm 17 years old this is when I'm in college and it's towards the end of the year we're just about to do our exams and everyone's applying through this thing called UCAS so UCA and that's essentially the platform that you use to apply to the university so i've already applied there's kind of like this buzz within the college library because that's where the computers are that's where everyone's doing the applications and stuff and i kind of ask around like what other people are doing you know naturally like small talk just with friends and stuff i'm asking oh what did you apply to oh are you excited what are you going to be doing it's like, it's nice to have these conversations and with every single conversation i had i'll be honest like i went into it in quite an optimistic way but the longer i stayed there the more i felt like this feeling of like overwhelmingness if that's a word it was this feeling where i felt i had done everything right but the more conversations i had and the more i learned about other people's perspectives the more i realized i wanted nothing to do with this because when i went around this college library speaking to each person about what they're applying for and how they, they think it's going to be i promise you not a single one of them actually wanted to go every single one of them told me i just have to oh i don't want to do this but i don't know what else to do my parents are telling me to go oh it's the only way i can like get this job they'll ask i mean like what other choices are there it's like out of literally hundreds of people my age i'm speaking to not a single one of them actually wanted to and maybe that's all right it's like oh education is like you're forced to go through it fair enough let me speak to people who have already gone through it who are older right so i speak to my uncles my aunties my older cousins and stuff who have already gone through university and the exact same thing happens again naturally they're the ones that are asking me oh Saif like what are you thinking about uni like you're finishing college how is it going what are you doing for uni and for every single one of them I'd tell them oh I'm taking a gap year or I'm not thinking of going at all I don't want to go to university and you can imagine if you have like especially if you're like Asian you have this but I'm sure like other cultures and stuff have this it's almost like it's the only option and everything else is almost demonized so I'll tell them this and they'll straight away snap at me and be like, oh no, you have to go. It's only five years. It's only four years. It's only three years. You just need to do it. It's something you just have to do. Oh, you can work later. Like just study now. It's like studying is the most important thing. It's like I'm hearing every single person go against it. And for the people that did go to university, I asked them, oh, what did you do for university? And how did you find it? Every single one of them told me that the degree either didn't help them much. Like they're in a job now, which they could have gotten without the degree. Or they would say that the highlight of it was literally just university life. It would be the fact that oh they made these new friends or they met this person or like they had this event that went on and not a single one of them explained how it was actually beneficial to their lives right now and this sounds harsh as hell and this is a horrible thing to say out loud and honestly it's like if anyone's watching this that i know i'm sorry but like i'm sure that there's a lot of editors especially guys my age who can relate to this where you look at a lot of people who are telling you to go to university or who have gone to university and if we were truly honest to ourselves if we like put morals to the side of like being a nice person and everything if you didn't have to tell anyone chances are you wouldn't want to be like them when you're older and that sounds horrible to say but they aren't living a life that you would want to live if you had to live a life like that if you knew you could basically forge however your life wants to go and if you were to actively choose to become more like them you would feel silly to do so when you know you have all this potential because let's be honest right now you're probably in a similar situation to me if you're watching this i'm assuming you're probably a teenager maybe a bit older than me i'm 18 right now and you probably have extremely similar opinions to this where it's like maybe you haven't said it out loud maybe like me saying this to you has only just made you realize like oh shit like that is actually how i feel but i never considered that uni and not listening to other people was an option and i hear this from so many people that like advocate for university and like further education and, like oh don't start a business get this job and you start at like seventeen thousand a year then go to 20 and then slowly you work your way up the corporate ladder but it's like i was 17 years old already making that money as like a dumbass like retarded 17 year old in his parents house literally just sitting at his desk 
and it's like this isn't like ego related or anything this is genuinely like if we're talking raw numbers statistic facts i was making at 17 years old what most people will make at like 23 24 and i'm literally so early in my entrepreneurship journey i'm like 17 years old even now i'm 18 bro and i've already had several months where i'm making over 10k that's 10k great british pounds bro that's like 13k or 12 and a half k usd i'm not saying i make that like crazy consistently but i've had a lot of months like that for most people they won't even have a single month where they'll do that money because i don't know if anyone's told you this bro but you've got an extremely rare opportunity in front of you because the beauty about editing the beauty about working online and entrepreneurship it does not discriminate to your age your race where you live your current situation none of it matters because as long as you're learning and you're implementing the things that you learn and you're simply working getting better than every single other person in this competition like that you're competing with as an editor you ensure that you're going to make at least something out of your work and a lot of the time if you do take the right steps if you listen to the right people you end up making more than you could have even imagined bro tell 16 year old me tell no tell 14 year old me when i'm playing fortnite for literally like eight hours a day after coming back from school sleeping like two hours that i would be making this much and i would be having the impact that i have and i would be able to live a life like this just because i decided to manipulate a few pixels on a cracked version of premiere pro tell 14 year old me that he wouldn't even believe you he'd think you're insane and I know that I could have gotten here so much earlier if I had someone tell me this before. Like, I had so many limiting beliefs. I had so many, like, just gaps in my knowledge, so many techniques I didn't know. But it took me naturally years to learn. And you can do the same thing. But what I hope I do here, the impact I want to have, is to lead, like, editors to make money from what they're already doing because you're already halfway there bro most people don't even know how to use premiere most people don't know how to edit you've already gotten the basic skills to go from zero to one is the hardest part you already know how to edit videos all you gotta do now is take the right steps and in six to twelve months from now you're genuinely not even gonna be able to recognize your old self if you've listened to me talk about this for this long, it's clear that this is something you resonate with. So you can scroll down right now, click the red subscribe button. There's also the Discord server that you can join. You'll meet other editors. They're literally on the exact same path as you. I jump in calls here and there. So you can go join that. I mean, go click this video right here. I think it's something you'll find useful. Peace.